for automotive. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when I was asked, you know, is this possible to have a container terminal quality industry standard? And I was asked by this by various people. I was very hesitant and I said, no, impossible. All the terminals are different. It is not possible to have one single standard. But then, of course, GL came in, and we discussed <coughs> in Hamburg, in detail, all the elements that should go in into such a container term authority indicator. And this was not a, an easy task. It took us several months before we finally agreed that we would give it a try. The committee, the Hamburg committee, then was called together. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we met in one year about six times. Yeah. And at the end, well, we came up with the standard. But the standard was slightly different than the one I had imagined originally. First of all, there was what we call a container terminal indicator standard, which actually has 70 items. 70. And all of these items are important. And if I can refer to the question that was asked earlier, mm -hmm. I cannot go, of course, in each of the definitions of this standard, but these are now available, and you can read them. And if you stick to these definitions, you should also be able to apply, you know, the container terminal quality indicator standard to your own operations. But it will need, you know, First of all, some goodwill on your side, and possibly, you know, you may have to give up some of the IDs that were put in your own standards before. Mm -hmm. right. Now, that was the first element. The second element, and this is where I go to my second part of the book, is where we actually use the CTQI master table. And the first one of these master tables has to do with performance. Performance. And we left it as simple as possible. We were talking about performance analysis, and that is the ship productivity on vessels, preferably bigger than 750 hoods. Because below that, you may have of combinations of feeder vessels and other types of vessels. We then talked about the gross grain productivity of the vessels. We talked about the bird working index, that is the time that you actually operate. The ship service quality index, and that is a very special one, because it figures out, based on the number of given uh, parameters, how much you should be able to And then you have the road vehicle service quality index, that is what you will do with respect to your road transport. You have your train service quality index, which effectively says what you should do with regard to the block trains, whether they are leaving on time or not. And we have a barge service quality index. And these are the only indexes that we have summarized in the performance analysis. Now that's the second part. The third part is the container terminal quality indicator index with regard to terminal superstructure and organization. And here, you know, we're talking about the superstructure, the sea-to-shore equipment. We talk, and this is very long, and I'm just, you know, right. going over this. 
We talk about the land side handling equipment. We talk about the truck handling. We talk about the rail handling, and we talk about the bar channels. And then we talk also about inspection areas. And then the final one, the organization, we talk about a work organization, a failure to respond, the training needs, the handling of reefer containers, the handling of IMDG cargoes, the planning process on the terminal, the communication between terminal and other transport shareholders and the port community. And that is what we are do doing with that respect. And then there's a fourth one, and that's the external factors and the hinterland connectivity. And where the previous three count, this one is calculated, but is not counted in the figures that are ultimately retained. Why not? Because most of what is happening with respect to the external factors and the hinterland connectivity are basically not due to the terminal, but due to many other aspects. And it goes about barge connectivity. It goes about rail connectivity. It goes about road connectivity, and in many cases, who is responsible for that? Local government, national government, and so on. And that is the reason that although we calculate it, we don't include those figures in the documents. Thank you. Okay.